And uh, ladies and gentlemen, with that coming up next is a session on modernization of steam power plants need of the hour. Modernization of steam power plants is critical in India as the country is significant energy consumer and one of the largest emitters of greenhouse gases. The majority of India's power generation capacity comes from coal-fired power plants, which lead to high emissions and operational costs. By modernizing these plants, India can improve efficiency, reduce emissions, and increase the reliability of its power grid, which also meets its growing energy demands. With a focus on clean energy and sustainable development, the modernization of steam power plants is the need of the hour in India. While Mr. J.S. Kamyotra will continue to moderate this session, inviting Mr. Naresh Kumar Sharma, MTech Thermal Engineering Specialist, Steam Turbine Engineering Siemens, to make his presentation. Before he takes over, a few words about him. With more than 15 years of experience in the energy industry, designing, uh, generating assets, upgrading assets, and working across the power value chain, Mr. Sharma has always been keen in making generation more efficient. He has pioneered in modern, modernizing energy assets and authored design guidelines while guiding and training engineers across the US, Germany, and India. His strength lies in adding value through the complete power generation value chain, and his next focus is to contribute towards the green energy dream with hydrogen as a fuel. Over to you, Mr. Sharma. I will now give you uh, the rights to share your presentation. Uh, thank you very much, Shreya, for the introduction. Our pleasure. We can see your screen. You could just go to the slideshow mode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Give me a minute. Okay, yes. well, this is visible now. It yes, uh, in the slideshow more. Let me yes, just point around. Okay. Uh, starting with the topic, modernization of the power plants. As already said about this topic, this is the need of the R. Need of the R means the India needs uh, the modernization of the already existing uh, power assets. We have uh, around. Uh, 200 gigawatt of steam power capacity already installed in India. And most of the power plants which, which are there in India are uh, around 15 to 20 years old or even older than that. So uh, uh, the technology with the steam, uh, with the steam turbine and uh, other uh, components of the power plant that is 15, 20 years old or even older than that. So the the, in the current scenario, this, this topic is being discussed for more than 10 years or even uh, more than 15, 20 years that uh, modernization is required, modernization is required. But the thing is, uh, only small amount of work has been done till now. The work is going on, but of course, a lot of work is yet to be done. And with that, I would say that government policies are also now aligned with that in the recent policy or the re in recent uh, uh, from, from Power Ministry, we saw that by 2030, by 2030, the recent orders are such that by 2030, we will not be retiring any of the power plants. So what we would be doing, we would be uh, modernizing them with the newest technology and going forward, uh, as the earlier speaker also said, for next 15 to 20 years or even more than that, we would be getting power from the coal power plants. So once, uh, uh, these power plants get modernized. These would be serving as a base load to the total load requirement. So that's just the main idea of the topic. In my uh, presentation, I would take first the need of the uh, modernization of the power plants. Uh, why do we need this? In that, in that, I would be covering the first the uh, the carbon footprint, reducing the ca carbon footprints, and in that. Uh, in addition to that, another uh, aspect would be the flexibility of the power plant to get them uh, integrated with the renewables. And the next thing, which would be an additional thing to that, that the, the modernization of a power plant should be thought about in the direction of digitalization also. I mean, if we have digital assets, we can uh, manage the power generation sitting at a particular place. And there are other uh, many more benefits of the digitalization. So those will be covered in this need topic and then I would be covering some technical details of the scope of in general what are the scope of uh, modernization and particularly modernizing the turbines that would be covered in the in the second topic the scope of the modernization and in that I would be covering some aerodynamics and some some you know efficiency improvements methodologies which we can 
uh, implement in our power plants to get more and more efficiencies out of that. And in flexible operation also, we would be uh, uh, discussing about what is the need of flexibilization. And then in the third topic, I would be going through the role of energy sector players like Siemens Energy and other major energy sector, play sector players, what they would be doing in coming years so that we are, when we are heading towards the um, net zero targets in 2050 and rather for India, it would be 2070, what would be the role of energy sector players? And then I have taken a few use cases in which I would be discussing what Siemens has done for a few of the power plants. I have taken only two use cases here. Of course, there are many more, but I have taken two use cases which are relevant to this forum. And then for further information, we can talk about uh, uh, if any questions and answers are there. Coming to the first slide. Uh, this slide shows the future of energy landscape. Uh, when we talk about the current scenario, we in India, we are having around 400, 410 giga, gigawatt of power generation currently. And out of that, around 50% we are getting from the coal power plants. But going forward in future, this trend is going to be changed. We know renewables are coming up. We see wind is coming up. Solar is also there. I think wind is around 10, 15%, then solar is around 15, 17% nowadays contributing to the total power generation. But this proportion will be getting higher and higher as we go forward towards the net zero. By 2030, we, we target to have say around 840 or 840 gigawatt of power requirement in India. And out of that around 30% would be the coal. And re uh, remaining 70% would be coming from renewables, and other energy sources. When I say other energy sources, there are a lot of things going on here and there. There are a lot of innovations, a lot of new technologies coming up, which would be taking place and which would be contributing towards net zero. So in this slide, if you see that lower left corner, this is the, you see the fossil fuel power plant. In addition to that, we see the own source wind, offshore wind, and if we go towards right, we see all of the technologies coming up like heat storage, then onshore wind here, solar panels, and all other technologies coming up. The major thing is when we would be going towards renewables or the other energy generation technologies, how fossil fuel power plant or the coal power plant would be getting integrated with that. First of all, what would be the proportion as I already said, the proportion would be going forward in 2030, the proportion would be somewhat around 30% of the total power generate, total power generation. But going forward from 2030 to 2040, and then moving forward, the power requirement would be increasing. But the installed capacity, if I talk about it also increase, although the proportion is getting reduced. So fossil fuel or the coal power plants still would be playing an important role in energy transition. These would be serving as a base load, base load uh, power plants. The, whatever base load requirement would be there, power, fossil fuel power plant proportion would be staying in correlation with that. But when we talk about integrating those power plants, with the renewables, we would be facing challenges of modernizing these power plants so that these are flexible. Flexible means these can operate on low loads. These can be ramped up at a high um, speed. These can be ramped down at a higher speed. So modernization comes into play when we talk about integration of these power plants with the new technologies or the renewables. So that's what this slide says. Coming to the next slide, need of modernization. When we talk about the first part, the first part, I would say the reduction of CO2 emissions. We know that we are heading towards net zero in 2070. India has set its target to be net zero in 2070, but you know, worldwide or the developed countries are already talking about in net zero in 2050. So when we talk about the reduction in CO2 emissions, if we go with the same pace or with the same uh, strategy we are following right now, we would be overshooting everything 
And if we talk about the sustainable development with that, we would be following this, you know, this uh, bluish cow. But when we say we have a target of net zero by 2050, this much reduction of CO2 should be there. And when we talk about reduction of CO2 by this amount, that's a huge amount. That's a good big number. If that's a big number, how would coal be? Uh, how would the coal power plant be be contributing to reduction of CO2? And we know that CO2 emissions from energy sector, coal is the uh, the major culprit. I would not say culprit, but it's it's the major emitter. And if at all we want to go with coal, we want to have coal in our energy portfolio. We need to make that more and more efficient and lesser and lesser CO2 emissions. When we talk about going over along with this in curve, we see that we are reaching here more than 40% CO2 reduction. So that can only be achieved when the power plants get modernized. If at all the power plants are operating with the same uh, technology, same uh, components which power plants already have, or the same uh, philosophy, then this reduction in CO2 is not possible at all. So that was the first part, reduction in CO2 emissions. And when we talk about decarbonization journey ahead in front of us, uh, we have divided it into three different uh, phases. And the first phase, we, when we talk about this is efficiency increase. When we are going towards decarbonization of the power plants, decarbonization of the energy sector, Efficiency increase of the existing power plants that comes into play and is the first thing we need to uh, concentrate on or we need to focus on so that uh, we can move forward towards the next phase. When we say that next phase, the next phase was, would be then the fuel shift or the hybridization of the fuel. That may be a global topic, but of course that would be relevant to India also if we are moving towards hydrogen. So there would be co-firing turbines, maybe the hydrogen turbine, uh, gas turbines uh, would be co-fired with the hydrogen, with some blending, and maybe uh, 100, with 100% 100 hydrogen with uh, advent of the technology in the near future. So the first phase, efficiency increase. Second phase, the fuel shift towards the hybridization of the, uh, the fuel. Then there would be the third phase or the phase where we would be focusing on the deep decarbonization. Currently, we are already seeing a lot of things happening in the energy sector which are heading towards this. There are a lot of other things in parallel to the efficiency increase and fuel hybridization, which actually are targeting uh, the net zero in 2050 globally. And if at all we want to go to the second and third phase, the first phase would be in front of us would be the efficiency increase. So how we would be increasing the efficiency? Of course, with the existing assets or existing power plants, that is not possible at all, or maybe possible by some amount, only to some extent, maybe uh, whatever aging factors have been in, uh, considered, Maybe with the new components, we can consider some, some amount of improvisation. But of course, with the advent of new technology or the implementation of the technology, which is higher efficient, we can really uh, increase the efficiency. And in other way, we can say that we can decrease the carbon footprint. Coming to the next slide. Again, I would say this is... CO2 reduction uh, need, how we would be taking care of this efficiency increase, we would be uh, modernizing the internals of the power plant, uh, uh, steam turbines. We would be modernizing the internals of the steam turbines. When I say internals, specifically, I am refer referring to the energy house of the turbine or the energy conversion, where, wherever energy conversion happens, it is uh, the blade path. So we would be saying the new blade path, new rotor, or the new inner casing, all those components need to be taken care of or need to be seen with, with regard to the efficiency increase. And then we can say that with upgrades of these existing assets, we can improvise the efficiency. Yeah. 
Coming to the next slide, modernizing scope. In this slide, I have covered more or less the same thing which I talked about in the last slide. What we would be changing, there would be a new rotor, new inner casing, and more special thing is the blade path. The blades are a bit more efficient, the newer blades. I would be talking about these things in the later slides also. And the flex power solutions also we have, Stevens has. And then I would say that the application of the new 3DS blades and the 3DB blading technology. In addition to that, we have advanced seal designs also in the assets which we are currently having uh, 15 to 20 years old assets or more than that. We don't have these all uh, uh, newer features in the turbine and that's why the efficiency is slightly lesser compared to the newer turbines. So uh, while modernizing, these all uh, components get changed. So what major benefits we would be getting out of it is increase the performance. And of course, while we are increasing the performance, the lifetime of the power plant will also be increased because the internal components which are uh, experiencing more fatigue life during the operation of the turbine, those get changed and then there will be a new lifetime of the turbine. And then the reduced reliability issues and outage time. Whatever reliability reduces, reduces uh, was reduced with the aging of the turbine, those issues are taken care of. Now, uh, reduced maintenance costs also because with the older technology, we had different maintenance concepts and with the newer technology, the maintenance concepts also get changed. And then the other important thing we would be uh, getting more flexibility as we were talking in that slide while integrating the steam power plant with the with the renewables we need to have flexibility so with the modernizing of these elements we would be getting more flexibility of the power plant we can uh, operate the power plants uh, at a load which maybe 50, 40% or somewhat around that. In the earlier assets or the earlier turbines, this was not the feature. This slide shows the picture of the modernized turbines. If you see the colored pictures here, we see these are the modernized internals, modernized internals of the HP turbine, then IP turbine, then the, and the LP turbine. And the when the complete train gets modernized, we get a good amount of performance increase in that. So what, we do modernization of HP, IP, and LP turbine, and parallelly we also modernize condenser, condenser, and then change the blade path components like rotor blading, inner casing, and as I said, newest blading and the newest sealing technology. Siemens has the uh, latest sealing technology, which which reduces the leakage losses by good amount, and the newest sealing technology gets implemented with the modernization. Coming to the next slide. This slide is about the uh, Siemens blading technology. Uh, what is different from, from the previous or the older uh, technology, older uh, blading? If we see here on the left in this picture, this sort of blades in general, uh, uh, whatever power plants are there in India, these sort of blades are implemented there. The blading technology is 15 to 20 years or even older than that. And that's why these cylindrical blades are, 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 are there. And if we talk about uh, improvising that blading, one moment, excuse me, please. So if we talk about improvising in, the, in this blading, we have for twisted blading to cater to the losses, incidence losses. And then the latest type of blading is there. This type of blading, we have bow for the lean of the blade at and the tip to reduce the secondary losses. So if we talk about these sort of blading, you see a cascade of blades here and the expansion through these blades. This is the enthalpy entropy diagram. And if we see, the ideal expansion line in a turbine, this black line represents the ideal expansion line. And when we talk about the traditional expansion line, this blue line shows expansion through the blades, expansion through the blade path via this blue line. And this ratio of these two enthalpy drops is called isentropic efficiency. So 
the efficiency of the turbine is derived by this point actually, because the starting point is same, but this point actually defines the efficiency here. But somehow, if we can bring this point down, we can have more enthalpy drop within the blades and less irreversibility. And due to that, we can gain more efficiency. So if we talk about the expansion through these blades, the, uh, when we take, say 3DS blades, that is three-dimensional, reduced secondary losses. The reduced secondary losses due to these bows. And if we talk about 3D B technology, V means uh, variable reaction dimensional blading with the variable reaction. Reaction gets varied when we talk about the length of the turbine or across the stages of the turbine. It also varies radially. And with that variable reaction, we can achieve this expansion line shown in red. So we can actually come to point number two and that increases the efficiency. That's the main thing which uh, Siemens blading has. And if we talk about the optimized load distribution within the entire blade path, we have the Siemens optimization tool, which is a very much versatile tool, which optimizes the blade path in such a way that each and every geometry uh, is handled by the tool and almost 3000 variables parallelly are handled by a numerical optimization tools. When we talk about uh, these sort of modification in the turbines, or uh, when we talk about the conventional methodology, when, when we only get uh, the turbine inspection or minor repair, and then sometimes in-kind repairs are, are also suggested by some of the, uh, or, or are also demanded by some of the uh, players that we only need to uh, exchange the components. But when we talk about the upgrade, if you see the first chart, first bar chart here, you see the cost slightly goes on increasing when we go on from inspection to the component exchange to the upgrade. But in parallel to that, when we talk about the value added to the customer, the value added to the customer here would be, give me a moment. The value added to the customer would be, the reliability would be short, short increased by good amount of good amount. And then the lifetime, because the new component we are getting lifetime will be increased. And on top of all would be the efficiency increment. Capacity increment, we can talk about upgrade, upgraded thermal parameters. The efficiency increase, we will also be getting the power output increase. And major thing would be when we talk about the decarbonization journey or the integration of these power plants with the, with the renewables, we would be having the flexibility. So these all three things getting implemented when we modernize the power plants. That was the from efficiency increase point of view. Another aspect of need, why we need uh, uh, the modernization of power plants, flexible operation. Although I have discussed a bit about it in the slides above, but this would be discussed in a detail now. This art shows the power generation from coal and renewables during a typical day. So this white line, shows the power generation by the renewables. To make it simple, I have kept it renewables. I haven't divided it into various other sources of energy. Maybe renewables uh, against the, uh, the wind and then the solar. I have taken it one for the sake of simplicity. And when we talk about the coal power generation, this magenta, dark magenta, uh, dark purple line shows the power generation in coal power plants in that typical day. And then the light purple line shows the summation of these two. So this is the power requirement actually. And these two lines show the generation of powers from various sources. If we see the power gets generated here in these hours, majorly from coal, then in the middle hours, this dips down, or I would say this, this is to be dipped down because renewables ramp up this time, maybe solar ramp up due to, due to the sun and uh, wind ramp up. So the power output from the renewables is very high or sort of very close to the required power. And so that's why we need to decrease the power output from the conventional or the coal power plants. Again, at these hours, the power output from the renewables get decreased. And due to that, the 
power output from the coals need to be increased. So if we talk about the flexibility now. We need to have coal power plants which can be ramped down here with a fast ramp down so that this gets to lower power output as soon as possible or with the increment of this much of uh, uh, delta is there, the delta need to be matched by the coal power plant. So whatever delta we are getting from the renewables, same delta we need to decrease in the coal power plant. So that ramp down happens here and then the power plant operates at bottom here and that may be around 30, 40, 45% of the power output of the plant or, or the rated power output of the plant. And then again, it, it gets ramp up in a short span of time. And then in, in, in those last hours, we would be, give me a moment, please. Sorry. So in that, on those last hours, the power output from the coal power plants will be at highest. So with that, we can see that there is a the need of making the power plants, coal power plants, more flexible to make them integratable with the renewables to meet the power demands, flex, uh, increasing and decreasing power demands. Then the next thing is. Uh, uh, Digital. When we talk about the modernization of the power plant, we have uh, out of if we, if we talk about the turbines, these are modernized. If we talk about the balance of plants, somewhat modernization can be done. But an additional thing which can be done is digitalization. If, if digitalization is also the scope of the power plant, there are versatile, or I would say there are a lot of other things which can be done with the power plants. Just a moment. So what we offer, what Siemens offers, remote diagnostic services. So we have uh, 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 an option to for the power plant operators to get their power plant mapped at our locations, and then the diagnostic can be done at, 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 at uh, remotely. As the, as the diagnostics also can be done remotely. Then we have thermal twin here. Thermal twin means the same will be replicated at the low, uh, at our facility and then other asset performance management. And we have also the, the virtual reality. I mean, uh, we have uh, implemented the, this thing with, with various NTPC power plants that the virtual re reality will give you a good idea of how the power plants operate. And then maybe we talk about the cyber security of the power plant. So all those portfolio uh, Siemens digital portfolio covers the total uh, operation of the power plants, total diagnostic, and then the performance management of the power plants. What does it do? It, was, it would really increase the productivity. Uh, it would increase the efficiency, as we talked about, uh, uh, increase the reliability of the power plant as we can monitor them uh, remotely, and then increase the flexibility. So in the entire energy value chain, if we talk about the energy value chain, in the entire energy value chain, we have uh, uh, all the things integrated. If we talk about the generation, generation of the power plant, then the industrial application there, then renewables, the new energy business, that is also a newest thing. There are various other technologies coming up uh, these days, which would be taking uh, a good amount of, or, or taking good amount of load, which we would be requiring in the future years. <clears throat> Coming to the reference cases, <clears throat> uh, one of the power plant modernization was done <clears throat> a few years back. It was Drax UK. Uh, it was uh, operating at 660 megawatt rated steam turbine. So uh, <clears throat> we operate, uh, modernize that. So uh, whatever power demand was there, the customer was demanding uh, around 690, 685, 690 megawatt out of this turbine. So with the same uh, thermal parameters, the customer was not willing to change the boiler. So that's why the 
uh, thermal parameters of the boiler were same, and then the scope was to improvise the efficiency so that we can have more power output out of the uh, out of the power plant. And in addition to that, whatever CO2 uh, emissions, there was a target of reduction of the CO2 emissions, and that was also closely related with the efficiency improvement. So what Siemens did. The, the turbine train, 66, 660 megawatt turbine train, internals were uh, modernized with the newest technology and that newest technology included uh, the, the latest 3DS blades, the optimized 3, 3D V flow path with the help of numerical tools and then the associated components like the rotor and the casing. That was also the scope of the power plant. And then enhanced power output of this power plant was 686 megawatt with an increased efficiency. And of course, as we talked, these were with reduced maintenance cost. When we talk about the reduced maintenance cost, uh, because of the, the newer components and the newer maintenance concepts, we have the newer maintenance concepts for the newer flexible turbines, flexibly operated turbines, due to which maintenance, uh, maintenance interval intervals also gets changed and reduced maintenance costs. And then additional turbine lifetime potential. I mean, turbine lifetime was also enhanced. In general, turbines operate for 20 to 30 years. But in this case, in this case, uh, the turbine lifetime, because we were retaining the outer components or the outer uh, external components of the turbine and the interfaces. So the valves and the and the uh, outer casing those were retained the residual life assessment was done and based on the based on that a new uh, newer life was provide, provided with, to the customer so the originally the power plant was running at 660 megawatt and the new uh, power output was 686 megawatt co2 emissions were also reduced by 5% around 5% Another reference case, uh, this is from India itself. Uh, uh, this was Hindustan Zinc. I don't think it's correct. This was uh, Hindustan Zinc Limited upgrade. The original turbine was, uh, I think there is a writing mistake here. Uh, the original turbine was 80 and we made it to 90 megawatt. So with the same externals, with the same interfaces, the power plant or the, the power output from the turbine was increased from 80 to 90 megawatt. And the reduction of the CO2 emissions per uh, kilowatt hour was also reduced. So that was use case. For further information, uh, you may please contact me or you may please ask your questions. Well, that was short, no? Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kamyutra. Over to you and also to the attendees. Please do share your questions in the Q&A or the chat box for uh, Mr. Nareesh Sharma. Well, can I ask some clarification? Yes, sure, please. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Sharma, for a very nice presentation. Uh, Specifying that yes, with the existing plant can have a better efficiency, flexibility, and reduce emissions at the same time. So depending upon what we do with the system, either we go in the first phase, we go second phase or third phase, that is inspection or upgradation of whatever that. And the need or the flexibility of the system to integrate with the changing energy production uh, because the coal presently constituted wise may have a lesser contribution in the future to balance uh, as a balance board. So I just Mr. Kamyutra, your voice is taking. I want to have a clarification. Mr. Kamyutra, your voice is taking. Since you are working in this field. Uh, in India, when we say about CO2 emissions, we don't. Okay, one minute. Maybe the signal problem. 
Now, can you hear me? Yes, it's a bit better now. Okay. Yeah, so signal problem. So, one point is that uh, when we talk about the CO2 emissions, uh, the Again, the signal is breaking. I can hardly hear you. Uh, Mr. Kamitra, can you hear us? Standards for CO2. Okay, Mr. Kamitra, actually we are unable to hear you. Um, I guess there's an unstable network issue. Uh, Shell, is it audible? Yes, you're audible now, sir. Yeah. So, one point is that do we need to introduce CO2 standards also as the one? Again, the voice is breaking. I can hardly hear you. I think the question is pertaining to do we need to introduce the new CO2 standards or the, the carbon capture technologies? in the power plants. If you can hear me, Kamitra. Degradation or modernization. Yeah, you're not able to hear. Is it with me only or? Shri, can you hear him? Voice is not Yeah, now can you hear me? Mr. Shava, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you now. Okay. No. So, my point was I, that, uh, uh, I believe Mr. Kamit was in a slightly unstable network. We'll just hold on while he sorts his network. In the meanwhile, mm -hmm. I would once again uh, urge the attendees. You have to any box at the bottom of your screen. So please clean your questions there for Mr. Naresh Sharma and uh, he could, the you know, have them responded to you. Mr. Kamitra, we are unable to hear you, sir. I see some attendees have raised your hand. I uh, request you to please uh, key in the question. We will not be getting you on the a uh, video on mode to ask your question. So you will have to key your question into the Q&A box. Uh, uh, can you hear me, Israel, now? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Okay. So my point is that uh, uh, to my Sharma, because Sharma mentioned that uh, any uh, improvement will also result in CO2 reduction. And when we talk about CO2 reduction, uh, there need to be some data based for comparison. And we don't have presently any standards for CO2 emissions. In case of power plants or for that matter, any other uh, industry where combustion is taking place. That's the first thing. Second point is that uh, uh, when we talk about uh, the heat rate, and yeah. our heat rate is slightly higher as compared to other countries. So, when we talk about modernization and upgradation or anything we talk about, can't we work on that aspect also so that with the same coal consumption, we can generate more power besides uh, increasing the efficiency, what you mentioned. Uh, what do you feel on that? Because it will save a lot of uh, energy, uh, coal consumption besides reducing the pollution also. Yes, yes, yes. Those are two more uh, very valuable points. I would say the first I would take the uh, the heat rate. You know, the heat rate is also closely associated with the efficiency of the power plant. If all other parameters are kept constant, then these are two linearly going with each other. And if we talk about another aspect, which is condenser pressure, if we talk about the European countries where the uh, ambient temperature is very low, there the condenser pressure can be kept very low. But in India or other countries where the ambient temperature is very high, and due to that expansion in LP cannot go beyond a certain point because of the ambient temperature limitation. So due to that also the heat rate is, uh, you know, uh, there, is a, there is a limit on the uh, expansion of the, uh, the expansion curve of the turbine and heat rate gets impacted. So of course the heat rate is a thing which we need to improvise, but 
the factors on which heat rate depends are also sometimes the environmental factors which cannot be controlled. Of course, when we say the efficiency increases there, when we talk about efficiency and efficiency in general can be defined roughly that the energy that energy that energy sought for divided by the energy that costs when we talk about the coal that is being burnt if we can somehow reduce the uh, amount of the coal burnt per unit power output the efficiency can be improvised the same goes with the heat rate also but there are there are some environmental factors other uh, things are yes okay. yes just last point uh two years back or just a couple of years back you can say we had the uh, the beneficiated coal to be used in the power plants. Beneficiated coal to be used in the power plant, that means coal with ash content of less than 34%. So that has been done away with. So what you feel uh, is the impact on the performance of the power plant with that? Mm, I don't think I have an answer to that question right now, but of course I can arrange an answer for that. Okay, because uh, uh, <laughs> Fine. So, thank you very much, Mr. Prabha. And uh, uh, sir, you may please forward the question to the mail ID I have. I'll I'll try to answer that question. Fine. Thank you very much. Because that because there is, yeah, please please. That, that topic is a bit different from 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 my domain because of you know the combustion and all phenomenon. Of course, that's related to that, but I haven't had a deeper look into that. I will come back with the answer. If you write a mail to me, I'll surely come back with the answer. Definitely. Uh, I'll do that. And uh, thanks a lot. Uh, it was a great presentation. Thank it you. was a great presentation uh, because that's the need of the hour for the country. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, it was really great. Maybe the other point can be that people want to have a better lunch, an early lunch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes. And we are just reaching there. So, once again, uh, Mr. Ramiotra, thank you for your support uh, again and again with all our events and for being on our advisory board. It's always an honor to have you with us and part of our events. Uh, Mr. Naresh Sharma, thank you for your time and uh, for joining us in for this session. Uh, with that, ladies and gentlemen, we now break for lunch. But do stay tuned as the conference will continue with the next session at 2 p.m.